This is why you should replace your tie rods in pairs. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. So I was trying to do tie rods on this vehicle, which overall is a fairly easy job, assuming you have the proper parts, tools, and knowledge. But sometimes it isn't. So I ordered my parts from 1AAuto.com, shipped fast and free, and I want to talk about it. Let's get into it. Let's go with the assumption that you went ahead and you diagnosed your front end issue. Maybe it was an issue with the outer tie rod end or even the inner tie rod end. Either way, you're going to have to make your way right here to the jam nut. Issues you might find when you're dealing with a jam nut might be you put a wrench on there, you try to turn it, and it feels as though it's stuck on there. Maybe the wrench you're using tends to slip and it's going to strip it out. Of course, that's going to make it difficult to get this loose to be able to break the tie rods free from each other. You might also try to heat up this area. Of course, if you heat it up, it might help break it free, but it's also going to weaken the metal. That's something that you definitely don't want to do when it comes to your steering. And of course, there could be other things around it that could get damaged as well. Or of course, by applying heat to this area, you could actually damage the threads on the nut or either tie rod. Stuff to keep in mind. Now let's go with the assumption you had plans on only replacing the inner tie rod end. To do the inner tie rod end, you'd have to fully take off the outer tie rod end. When you go to take off the outer tie rod end, the best way to do that would be to remove the nut, and then of course use a stud remover, which will grip onto here and pop this right on out of there. Not everybody has the specialty tool to do that, so they might use something as simple as a hammer. Areas on the tie rod that you could damage if you were trying to remove it the wrong way? Could be right along here, the stud. You go ahead and give this a couple of bonks because you want to break it free. Maybe you peen the very end right here up, and then you won't be able to put the nut back on. Speaking of the nut, typically this is a locking nut. Essentially it means it's a single time use. Generally you'd want to go ahead and replace that if you had removed it. Other than that, if you were using your hammer and you're just bonking away, you could potentially hit the stud here where the threads are. That would be very bad. You might damage the knuckle along this area. This is aluminum, so it's pretty soft. And then of course up here, you have a protective boot. That's supposed to protect the joint that's inside this area and make sure that no moisture or debris makes its way in. If you go ahead and pinch that or damage it in any way, you could cause an issue with the ball and socket area. Speaking of the ball and socket, let's say maybe you didn't want to hit here or even here because you didn't want to damage any of this. And you went right along here. You just started bonking on it. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Right here, there's a ball and socket, as I had mentioned. And if you cause any type of separation in there, you're going to have movement. You go ahead and you replace the inner tie rod end. You think everything's good. You put it back together and you still have movement coming from the outer tie rod end. And sometimes it just seems like it doesn't matter what you try. It just doesn't want to come apart. Okay, I finally got it out of there, and now I can continue on by replacing my inner tie rod end. Wait a minute. Now with everything you saw, with me trying to get this outer tie rod end out of the knuckle, does it make any sense to go ahead and put this back on after I replace the inner tie rod end? No, probably not. If I had the right tool and I did actually pop this out properly, more than likely the tie rod would probably be fine. Unless, of course, it did have some wear that I didn't happen to notice. Ooh. Now let's go with the assumption you are only going to be replacing the outer tie rod end without the inner tie rod end. We'll also assume that the threads right here looked okay. Obviously these don't, but we'll assume they do. There might be something underneath this jam nut that you'd want to pay attention to. Let's go ahead and take this off of here. Underneath where that jam nut was, you can tell that the threads are actually stripped and rotted in that area. Moisture could sit inside there, and this is exactly what it's going to do. That's very bad. And looking at the threads on the inside of the nut, you can tell that those are stripped as well. That's very bad. This is what's going to hold everything together. Just this one thing right here could cause an issue where you go off the road. Although it is less common for people to want to replace the inner tie rod end when they're doing the outer tie rod end, there are important reasons why you should want to do them as a set, as I keep mentioning. Of course, if you did heat up that jam nut, weakening the metal, that would be bad. Strip threads, once again, bad. But if you were to follow this shaft all the way up behind this rubber boot right here, there's something else that I want to talk about. I'm going to go ahead and remove the clamps. We'll slide the boot off and we'll have a look. Now that I removed the bellows boot, let's have a close look at it. The bellows boot is supposed to be soft and pliable. So as you turn your wheel side to side, this is going to be able to compress and decompress. You want to make sure it's not torn, worn, damaged in any way. Commonly, once you get it off of there, you might happen to find that maybe it has a little rip or tear or something the like. If you see something like that, 
you have to go ahead and replace this. This is something that's also available at 1AAuto.com, and it's something that's going to help prevent damage to your power steering rack or even the inner tie rod end. It's super important. So we'll go ahead and look all the way up where the ball and socket is on the tie rod end. A couple things that you want to pay attention to here is you want to make sure there is some movement coming from here, but it's not loose and floppy. If it's loose and floppy, the joint on the inside could be worn. Also, if you can grab onto it and wiggle it in and out, that's a very bad sign. And of course, once again, the joint on the inside is worn. Up on this one, it's actually got some physical damage that I can see with my eyes. This is very bad. This isn't something that's super common because it's generally protected by a boot of some sort. But who's to say what happened during the last installation or if somebody else was working on this at some point. This wouldn't even have been noticed if I was only doing the outer tie rod end. Other things you might happen to notice if you were only doing the outer tie rod end and not the inner, maybe you have a power steering fluid leak coming from your power steering rack. That would be a very bad thing. It's going to affect the steering of your vehicle and of course the safety overall. Okay friends, I gave you a whole bunch of reasons on why I believe it's important to make sure you replace your inner and your outer tie rods at the same exact time as a pair. Looking at this right here, you can tell with our brand new quality 1AAuto.com parts, it looks amazing. I feel confident driving down the road that I'll be safe as possible. I'm going to go ahead and get the wheel back on here, make sure I get it safely down to the local alignment shop. Now I hope you liked the video, I hope you learned a little something. If there's something in this video that you found was interesting and you think somebody else might find it interesting, go ahead and share it with them. It would mean everything to me. If you like the video or even love the video, go ahead and smash on the like button for me mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell, that way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks. Bumper baby baby bumper. Hi mom. Like this? Because the end of it gets cut off in the frame. What if I do? Yeah, I just wouldn't put it in front of your face. A little higher? You know, maybe looking at this, it kind of makes a little sense to go ahead and replace a few other parts along the way.